Folks are born, made a way to fly Ooh, the red, white, and green And when the band plays Kaiser hymn Ooh, they draft you for the war machine It ain't me, it ain't me I ain't Prince Ferdinand, son, son It ain't me, it ain't me Howdy there, folks. Tex of the Black Pants Legion here, and welcome back to our game of... Let's see how long we can keep the Austro-Hungarian Empire relevant. We're at war with America because I'm an idiot, and I think they're probably going to try to take uh, Colombia from me, which is probably going to happen. I don't think I'm going to be able to stop them from doing that, and my next set of ships is going to be a while. Um, it's going to be a sad while. Uh, I've had some battleships that I'm building, the Franz Ferdinand class, which are going to take a long time. And the Ersatz is also going to take a long time. I have some ships out in the Pacific that I might use to just harass the Americans. Uh, I might just have to, but I'm also really, really nervous about taking anything out of the Pacific right now because of how the game works. I'm worried that if I move boats, I'm going to end up getting slapped really, really hard. And I don't, I don't want to do that. So anyways, let's continue talking about ships and ship posting and all sorts of stuff. I think last time around I was talking about the starts of the Prussian Navy, which is actually kind of interesting. Uh, for a long time, they were run by the Prussian army. And naturally, they weren't run very well. The early Prussian Navy had this hilarious problem where the Prussian army had the view that ships should be commissioned when it was time to go do your testing and maneuvers and everything else, and then decommissioned in the autumn and send the crew ashore to save money because they weren't that important. They were like, eh, you'll only do so much a year. So imagine a Navy that gets fired for six months out of the year and that was the Prussian Navy. They literally would just fire them. They would say, you're done, and send them home. And as, as crazy as that sounds, that is the truth. Uh, they also believed that the Navy was basically to be used for coastal defense and that the Army was everything. And you don't start to see a change in that mindset at all until the establishment of a lot of these very, very interesting uh, yacht clubs. That's kind of what helps change it. Kaiser Wilhelm II's obsession with yachts. And then there's this guy named Tirpitz. So Tirpitz is the architect of the Prussian Navy. He's the guy who says we need fucking battleships because the Kaiser and everyone else wanted cruisers so they could have this global response plan to send German ships everywhere, pretend to be a global power, and then to, as Mayan put it, defend the commons. The problem was is that the German colonies all combined at their height had maybe 25,000 Germans in them. They weren't used very well. They cost the Germans a lot of money, and they were never really exploitative in the terms of economic sense that most European powers colonies were. So they were kind of late to the game, and they didn't understand what they were doing, and they never really had a plan. Now, there are some historians that believe that the whole colonialization thing was more or less, more or less, an attempt for a bit of political game to prevent certain powers in the German and Prussian hierarchies from gaining prominence. What I'm talking about is, quite interestingly enough, there, there was supposed to be a different king. You have this reign in Germany that where Germany becomes the Germany we know, the Imperial Germany, thanks to this guy by the name of Otto von Bismarck. And Bismarck is a really interesting study. He gives this whole era of Bismarckian policymaking that more or less builds a German empire. Bismarck does that. But as he leaves, as he's kind of pushed out near the end of his career because he lost a lot of uh, fame and he lost a lot of power because he played a very complex political game and he did not do a good job playing a very complex political game. He more or less uh, 
slowly lost power. He slowly lost face. And the power of the Kaiser, more or less, was reinstituted. So the Chancellor, or Kanzler, uh, Bismarck lost a lot of his power. And there's actually a really famous political cartoon, which, uh, if I remember the subject matter, or at least the image of it, is it looks like uh, Bismarck is being left. He's being dropped off the ship, like they're dropping off a pilot in harbor. And it shows that he's being retired, more or less, by the German state. And so it's it's sad business for the German Empire because Otto von Bismarck was a really smart guy for them. Was he an autocrat? Did he overstep his bounds? Did he do all of these things that were probably not the best? Sure, sure. But he was a peerless statesman and he knew how to drive the empire. Also, it looks like America has built itself a big boy ship and I need to sink it. I need to sink that fucker and I need to make it go away. So the interesting thing uh, when it comes down to German monarchy, or rather I should say Prussian monarchy, is uh, there, there is a guy by the name of Frederick III. And Frederick III dies in 1888 of cancer. And Frederick III is really interesting. He had an English wife. And if I, if memory serves, I believe he had an English wife. He was also, um, yeah, he did. He had an English wife. He married uh, Victoria, uh, who was the eldest child of Queen Victoria. And he was a liberal. And by that, I mean liberal for a monarch, not liberal in the modern sense of liberal. Liberal for a monarch means that, like, people aren't property. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, that people should have a say in their government. That's very liberal for a monarch. And um, what's kind of interesting is he also changes German history because a lot of people were worried that once he took the stand, because he had an English wife and because of his liberal monarchy, he would belly up to Britain and become Britain's best friend and that the German state would reverse a lot of the empire building it had been doing and instead become kind of a complementary empire to the British Empire. And mind you, at this point, the, the German... Oh, wow. Yeah, listen to my guys crunching each other. Mind you, at this point, the German Empire, its navy, the Prussian Empire's navy, had been coaling at British ports, had been buying British port supplies, had been trained by the British government, had bought British coal and run on it. It was really a micro-royal navy, and so there's this huge interplay between the rise of the Prussian navy and this really interesting period where Frederick III comes on. And so what happens, and this is just pure happenstance that changes the whole aspect of Europe, contributes a lot to the rise of the Prussia we know by World War I. There was this guy by the name of Moral McKenzie, right? And he was an English doctor. And so McKinsey uh, went in because Frederick III had had a biopsy on a part of his throat. And the German doctors were like, this is probably cancer. We need to remove this. And Moral McKinsey uh, was pushed into service because of Victoria, you know, uh, his wife, uh, Frederick III's wife, going, hey, Maybe we should get a English doctor. Maybe we should get this famous English doctor because pathology is a brand new thing at this time. And this guy was a known pathologist. And they said, what if we get this brand new doctor in this brand new field and we just get a second opinion? And so he came in and he brought in a bunch of English doctors who all then said, oh God, all right, that's not good. All these English doctors then said, yeah, it's not cancer. We all agree it's not cancer. So he didn't get it operated on. He then slowly starts to get more and more complications. And it turns out the German doctors were right. It was cancer. And it is what killed him. It is tragically what killed Frederick III. So the reason we have Prussia that we have in World War I is because this guy's wife was like, let's go get a different doctor. Let's get a different opinion. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, don't 
listen to second opinions, don't listen to outside opinions. But when your first initial set of doctors says, this is cancer and we should do something about it, you should probably listen to them. And when another doctor says something completely the opposite and says, no, 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 that's, there's no way that's cancer, you should probably get a third opinion. Because when you have a binary thing of it is cancer, it is not cancer, and the first set goes, it's turbo cancer, and the second set goes, it's not, it, you, you need to make sure that there is some consensus here. And they didn't do that. And of course the controversy, the uh, controversy that stems from... You know, this guy's English wife went and got English doctors who then resulted in the death of an emperor causes all sorts of issues among the German people. And they go, well, this is proof that, you know, the English are meddlesome and that they don't know what they're doing and that they wanted him to die. And it gives pretty much the German aristocracy every option to exercise that they don't trust England anymore. By the way, I'm watching this guy just clap all my dudes. However, I've launched, eh, wow. Okay, I'm not getting torpedoes off. The USS Utah is doing really well, and holy shit, it can do 27 knots. That is a big boy battleship. I may have bit off mar far more than I can chew. I need to make sure that I'm getting some torpedoes off. And I'm not just trying to blame it all on one doctor and one choice made by one couple at the wrong time. This sort of shit happens all the time throughout history. There's plenty of people who die in hospitals for any reason. Um, there's, there's lots of unfortunate things that happen like this in history. But I think that that one case is fascinating. And I think that that really does shape it more than anything else. A lot of people will say, oh, well... This one guy getting shot in 1914 is what starts World War I. And I think that that is a bit incorrect. I think that it is a series of policy choices and all of these interplays and the fact that all of Queen Victoria's kids were involved. And I, I also think that if Frederick III had been the Kaiser, you would not have had the problems you had you would not have seen the war you did. And we sent it to the bottom. Thank God. Now we have to sink the Chicago. Finally, the torpedo boats pay for themselves. But as you can see, they took a lot of my guys out. So that is an unfortunate side effect. My guys are still landing twerp, so it looks like I may twerp myself a bit. Which is unfortunate, but kind of funny. But yeah, there is a lot of interesting stuff in history like this. It's it's frequently the overlooked little aspects in history that do contribute to things. I have some people who are, you know, critics of Text Talks Battletech because they go, I don't understand why this is in the video. I don't think this applies. And I want people to know that history is frequently the small details. As a historian, I can tell you that. It's frequently the small little things that add up that tell the wider story. It's not just one case of one guy doing one thing. History is seldom that nice and polite and neat. It is quite frequently a bunch of things playing together. But I strongly contend that if Frederick III had been the Kaiser, if he had lived a longer life in power, you would have seen German policy soften. You would have seen the Prussian Empire take a different tack. I think it would have become a lot like the late Victorian and early Edwardian era. You would have seen a lot more investiture in stuff like industry and a lot less money put into navies. All right, I'm going to agree to the peace treaty just so I don't have to fight the United States anymore because they terrify me. And I want to get my new ships out before I pick a fight with anyone. But in the meantime, I can go fight all these people down here and cause as much chaos as possible, because I have no chance of landing troops in America. I have really no chance at anything until I get my heavier ships. And even then, once I get those heavier ships, I will need to send these heavier ships to do stuff like take Central America. I could probably pull that off. And even then, that might be difficult. But yeah, the, the interplay of empires is an interesting study. And I feel that frequently a lot of people overlook things. They, they try to go, well, it's this one event. And I go, it's rarely one event. It is exceptional. Oh, peace signed. Uh, let's see if I can get the Cayman Islands out of this. I got the Cayman Islands. Uh, I'm going to ask for money for the Navy so we don't go broke. 
because that would be nice. Um, and then let's see, how many? 20 torpedo boats. I'm going to move these to Cartagena because I need them there uh, to respond against American aggression. And I'm going to move the other 20 boats. Uh, let's see, the Caymans won't support it. Uh, Santa Marta, what is it, uh, Tranquila? Uh, Barranquilla, I was going to say. I don't think there's a port named Tranquila down there. And it was hiding most of it, so I was correct. Let's move the rest of our boats back to... Uh, okay, there's the one battleship. Let's see, Durazo, Spalato. You know what, I'm going to move these to Odessa. And hopefully I can get these guys in port before we go bankrupt. The torpedo boats paid for themselves and being able to cause as much casualty as possible but if he had had a bigger battle fleet with some actual defenses I would be fucked I would be absolutely fucked alright German Empire versus Japan D to D to D but yeah consider that for the first 10 years of Kaiser Wilhelm II's reign Germany built four battleships if memory serves, they, they weren't that great. And they realized that their navy really needed a lot of work in order to become this peerless, seagoing navy that they desired. It's really hard to build a navy from scratch, especially a navy that had been so shit on by the Prussian military. Uh, you, you find that the Prussian army thought the navy was nothing. And at first, they only were okay with uh, getting into torpedo boats. Um, that's where Tirpitz started his career. The guy who built the German Navy's battleships, the guy who gave them their naval laws, the guy who they later named a battleship after. Tirpitz started off in torpedo boats. And again, in his time in torpedo boats, he said those were the best years of his life. He learned from the very bottom. Turpitz was a guy who learned from the very bottom of everything. He was actually in charge of torpedo production for a while. He had to actually learn how they worked and build a few himself. He had to get involved. He had to get his hands very dirty in the very early stages of building his navy. So he was a guy who knew every nut and bolt. And when they returned the torpedo boat idea, they sent him to the Far East Squadron. So he's the guy who's behind the uh, German sighting and choosing of Qingdao as a uh, port. Because he realized, we can't just base our ships out of Hong Kong. And it's not because he didn't trust the English. He just realized that the Royal Navy is going to put his ship second, which any Navy would. So imagine the German Navy comes in and they need work done and they have to wait in line. So he realized that won't work. He is also an interesting fellow because he came up with this doctrine belief even when he didn't have battleships. When he didn't have battleships, when he did not have the actual ships to use for his thoughts, thesis, and uh, strategies, he went out and used other ships. He would just get whatever boats he could and then put them in the water and then drive them around and go, okay, here's my idea on how they work. And so his idea of battleship doctrine and squadron use was he said we need eight battleships at a time or none. He said they need to be in formations of eight. That is the most optimal naval formation for battleships. He was a guy who believed in hitting them with a hammer. He did not believe in just pussyfooting around. He believed in hitting them really, really hard. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell the ministers to fuck off because I don't need any more unrest. As you can see, I'm keeping people fairly content. Unfortunately, my monthly balance is going to scrape the wall. So this is where Perun screams as I have to sabotage other programs in order to pay for things. I hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> He's going to be like, Dax, no! It's fine. It's fine. It'll be all right. Don't worry about it. But when it comes down to naval doctrine and everything else, there's a lot of really interesting people during the 1890s and 1900s, and they give us a lot of ideas. And you have to keep in mind, while we can look back in history... <laughs> While we can look back and say, this was the right idea, this was the wrong idea, it's, oh, Greece wants a battlecruiser. Yes, pay me. Um, 
When we realize that some people go, this was the right idea, this was the wrong idea, it's easy to judge with the benefit of hindsight. It's very easy to say, well, of course that's the right idea. It's very easy to say, of course aircraft carriers were the way to go. Of course, then, you know, submarines and unrestricted submarine warfare is the most efficient. I mean, you start looking at all of these ideas and going, of course. They didn't know that then. In fact, nobody did. Everyone's just trying to guess. Uh, yep, Netherlands wants some destroyer. That's fine. I can be an arms depot for the world, even though my shipyards are at massive overcapacity. And the game says I'm very behind because I've kept the Habsburg ship in defiance of God. But hey, that's how it works. But when it comes down to looking at naval operations, do not judge by the lens of here and now. You have to look at what evidence they had presented in front of them at that time. A lot of these people are working in the dark. They have no idea as to what things will be. It's why I give Tirpitz a lot of benefit of the doubt, because Tirpitz came up in an era of sailing ships. That's where he started in the Navy. He started off in the Age of Sail. He went through the Age of Steam. And through that, he kept a mind that was open-minded to all sorts of new ideas without being judgmental or dismissive over most of them. He just said, that could work. And he kept saying stuff like that. That could work. That's a reasonable idea. That could work. I foresee this as being useful. Whether they be torpedo boats or advanced battleships or dreadnoughts. He went from an age of sail to an age of steel. And he embraced every change in technology. He was frequently in the right place at the right time with an open enough mind to look at things and evaluate this has potential versus that does not. And it's kind of interesting to look at people like that in history, people who have that foresight to not only make sound and sober decisions, but to admit when you're wrong and go, well, okay, that's a fucked up idea <laughs> and just not do it. But it is interesting to see who had it right and who had it wrong. There's a lot of people who also overpromise because they're not morons. I don't want people to look back and go, that person was a moron. It's very easy to say that of people. It's very easy to be dismissive. It's very easy to say this person is an idiot and this person doesn't know any better and blah, 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 blah. That's not very genuine. You don't need to say people are idiots. You can say they got it wrong. That's more than that's more than correct. You can say somebody got something wrong. But you also have to balance out who they were and when they were. So you'll find that people who are the heads of militaries frequently have to overpromise. They frequently have to overpromise. They have to frequently lobby for things, which means they're going to lie their ass off in order to get something out of it. They have to promise, oh, this is the only time we'll ever need to buy this program. Oh, this is the only, these are the last ships you'll ever need and all that other stuff. They're lying. They know that there's going to be changes in the future, but they have to also get their programs built. And that's the issue of it. By the way, my two battleships are fitting out right now. And then I can overhaul them to make them modern. And I can overhaul the Habsburg again. Yay! People are screaming in the comments now. They're like, let it die, Tex. No, I will not let it die. It must serve forever. I want to see if I can get it to 1940. <laughs> so I have the ability to make submarines now which uh, I'm going to slowly improve submarines. I'm not going to start mass producing coastal submarines. If you want to know what a coastal submarine is, look at the type one, two, and three U-boats that the Germans made, which were more or less training subs. They're not that good. They are designed for very relatively close to shore operations. Um, they're really good in stuff like the Black Sea and the Mediterranean, but they're not so great out here in the North Atlantic. They have limited range, both above and below the water. 
They're not great, but coastal submarines are how you train a navy. You need to send them out on shorter stints on smaller boats before you give them the big boats so they hurt themselves. You need to give them that opportunity. They have to learn, and that is where you start. A lot of, a lot of people just only know the Type 7 U-boats, which came a little bit later, but those crews need to train on stuff, and, you know, that, that doesn't come out of nowhere. Okay, looks like my budget may kiss the wall again. I keep saying yes to people in terms of building ships. I'm going to build uh, or rebuild my destroyer fleet. Um, and I'm going to start building submarines as soon as I can build submarines that have sufficient range. Because I want to be able to park a million million U-boats off the enemy coast. I want to be able to just sit there and be like, you lose. I want to sink all of their transports. I want to embrace unrestricted submarine warfare. Yes, I need to make sure that I'm not doing dumb stuff, but I might do dumb stuff anyways, because while I know stuff like cruiser submarines are not exactly effective, I think they're cool. And that that is kind of my kryptonite. Uh, the rule of cool must persist. The rule of cool is very important. So everyone else is building giant ass battleship fleets, which is a problem. Um, my my own shipyard is now just now under capacity, which means in five months I should have my battle cruisers out, and I can operate my battleships in one fleet, my battle cruisers in another. The battleships are pretty amazing. Uh, they're, they're pretty awesome. The battle cruisers are going to be pretty awesome as well. And I'm going to operate those like Panzer Schiff. I'm going to send them out. And hopefully, I'll be able to continue to get really good technology. But I'm also starting to deliver on these foreign ship orders. I just need to make sure that the uh, navies of the world don't size me up and realize I only have 104 ships to defend my global empire. I need them to not... Oh, cool. Spain's trying to get back in the game. They're slowly starting to come back, which is interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, we'll see if that works out for them. Bless their heart, they're trying. I mean, that's the most you can do with most empires. But, yeah. But when it does come down to global history and everything else, remember that a five-minute meme video on history is not a primary source, and that you're gonna need to actually expend some brain power, and that you're going to need to actually do some studying. It's fine to be introduced to an idea through a limited means. It's very cool to be introduced to an idea through a short little informative video. Nothing to shit on those short little informative videos, but you need to do more research. When it comes down to ship stuff, when it comes down to global operations, when it comes down to giant building plans, when it comes down to building something that governs nations, empires, destinies, you need to, you need to do a little bit more studying. And that's just because these things are devilishly complex. Warships are devilishly complex. The nations that build them are complex. The people who design them are complex. And we are soon to be done with these battle cruisers. And then I can watch my budget evaporate as I upgrade them all. I know I'm constantly teetering between financial wrath and ruin and plenty. But that's okay. In my spare time, I've been playing as Spain in a playthrough that I don't record, but just testing myself. And I managed to keep Spain more or less intact and slowly added onto its imperial holdings. But my God, is that difficult. It is an incredibly difficult situation. Um, uh, Greece wants destroyers, Netherlands wants destroyers. I'll take the money. I need it. I need the money. All right, so we're gonna hopefully build some much better bigger destroyers and I'm hopefully going to just overhaul these things now I have these two wonderful giant ass battleships and in one month I will have all of my other boats leaving the dockyard there we go and they'll be fit out and then I will overhaul all of them at the same time 
I will build no more of those battle cruisers. I will build no more of those battleships. I will then have to rebuild a new version of my destroyer fleet, and I will have to adjust my economies to allow for it. But it looks like this is about what I can handle. Germany and Japan are fighting. Good luck, guys. Just keep it to yourselves. Let's look into politics and see who's trying to kill us next. France? Nope. I'm not going to fight them. Japan, though, might take a swing at me. China and the Soviet Union are on the fence. I'll sort that out for them. I, I really don't need them to come bother me. I'm just going to be like, please don't do this. And they'll go, but I want to. And I'll be like, please do not do this. I did not deserve this. You guys need to go away. And they'll probably get a little mad, but that's okay. So let's get into ship design. Uh, I'm not going to... Mm, I will overhaul the destroyers first. They are the most numerous portion of my fleet, and I have some new technologies. So let's go ahead and do what we can there. Uh, turbo electric drive, it says these are now wrongly placed, and that's fine. I'll just rebuild this whole thing above the water line. All right, turbo electric drive. We are still running on coal, which is hilarious. I know I could put better engine shafts in there, but why? That sounds expensive. I'm going to put really reinforced hulls on these things because they, they just fall out of the water. And I want to make sure that I can use these for a while because I have so many of the fucking things. Um, so let's put in a main tower. Advanced tower. Yes. And then we put on a rear tower. We'll put this guy here. Uh, right about there ought to do. And then I put <laughs> ultra enhanced funnel. There we go. Look at that. Extra smonk. And then we put in a gun there and a gun there. And then we're going to just put uh, torpedo tubes there. And I don't like the cheek torpedo tubes because I don't think they do very well for me. So I'm going to remove the rear gun because the, I'm not really gunboating people. And there we go. So we're going to put the 21-inch dwarfs on this thing. We're going to put the big blasting charges on it. And we're going to just kill the shit out of people as best we can. The boat's more or less the same. It has one less gun, so there's less for it to worry about. I'm going to try to up the armor. It says it's probably going to be fractions of an inch, but that's okay. And uh, I could put some smaller guns on there just to fight other destroyers. So this, this can be fun. You, you put some little small guys on there just to fight other destroyers. And then what you do is you lower the diameter of the gun so they're itty bitty. And then we make the front gun have a much longer barrel and we make the little side guns have much longer barrels so they have more velocity. And these little guns, just 1.1 inch guns, so they'll shoot pretty fucking fast. And they're still fairly short range. But they'll be okay. Now, I know this thing doesn't handle very well. It looks like it's not going to handle very well, considering it is a limited displacement ship, but that's fine. I can up the engine. Ah, uh, yeah, all right, that's fine. 32 knots now. And I'm just going to get in there with all my big boy torps, and I'm just going to sink him as best I can. My torps now have a really appreciably long range. We're running about 10 kilometers, which is decent. That's decent. I do want to get into the 15 kilometer range though. So by the time I am spotted by larger ships, I can drop smoke and fan these out and really bother the enemy with them. I need them to die and I need them to die quickly. So we're going to overhaul all these fuckers. This is they can do it in three months. I'm going to take this off the menu so people stop ordering them. And then I'm going to see if my bow. Oh, no. Okay. So. Now we go bankrupt. I need to remove everything from everything. And I have to do this. And it'll say, you're going bankrupt. And I'll go, I know. The government will appoint me an emergency amount of money. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I may get fired. That's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Text destroys his navy in one cool trick. Ah, oh, some of you called it. Some of you are going to have commented right before it and gone, no, no, you were doing so well. Why did you do this? It's okay. I can bounce out of it. I'll probably just scrap half the fleet and then redesign better destroyers and replace um, the better boats with fewer ones. 
and fewer better boats. We'll see what we can do. We'll see if they fire me. Uh, yep, okay, they gave me an emergency appropriation, and it only gave me a little bit of unrest, which isn't too bad. All right, let's see if we can't crawl out of this hole here. All uh, right, oh, these are all in being. One moment, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do these, right? And we do limited. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the Odessa boats. There we go, the Odessa boats can go. Tinian boats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna scrap half. And then Barranquilla, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna scrap half. We need to lower our cost anyways. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, there. We're gonna reduce the size of our navy as we go along. All right, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. And we are going to reduce the overhead and see, look how nice it is now. Now we can put our transport and show, oh boy, yeah, that's still going to be too high, but that's all right. We're not a world-class Navy, not yet. We need to make some errors, and errors are how you learn. As soon as these things are all done, all 48 that remain are all done, I can then overhaul the battleships, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, more GDP is good. We need that GDP growth. Um, we're going to continue to try to shore up relations with some nations. Soviet Union is big enough and pushes on enough of my border to be a problem. France could be a nightmare. Because even though France is only that big, it controls a lot of colony. That means they have a lot of money and a lot of manpower. They could suddenly turn around and start whipping our ass. Now, the destroyers have all been refit. That's good. Now I can refit the Habsburg. And some people are going to start screaming, Tex, that's going to lose money. I know, I know. But I'm the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I stretch from Austria to Ukraine. We're not, we're not the smartest, sanest thing that's ever been around, but, you know, we're going to do our best. Now, let's go ahead and make sure that France doesn't want to kill us. Japan is probably going to try regardless, but that's just Japan. I'm also going to try to get much better destroyers uh, as time goes on, because I feel that that is where we will make our money especially when it comes to export business. So here's the old Habsburg. It says, you are absolutely obsolete. Please don't do this thing anymore. Please let it die. And I'm like, no, it needs turbo electric drive now. They're like, why? I'm like, it needs Krupp armor. It needs, uh, it, it needs double reinforced bulkheads and anti-flood three. And people are just screaming. The budget office, why, why? Because I can. Ooh, incendiary. Yes, we'll move to those. Better range finders, hydrophones. Uh, yeah, we're going to put those in there. And I'm going to keep everything else more or less the way it is. Um, it doesn't have any torpedoes on board because I know better. They'll just shoot right through this hull and blow them up, which is bad for the ship. Explosions inside bad. Uh, not sure if you guys knew that. Just put that in the things that text taught you. Uh, explosions inside bad. Uh, we're gonna make the main belt a 14 inch belt now and I, I know that this is absolutely ridiculous but we're gonna move up to a 15 inch belt. It, it says it's gonna take some time to make this all work out and we're gonna go to a single large smog stack. Why? More armor. We're going to add a lot more armor to this thing. Is this a sane choice? No, absolutely not. This is not a sane choice to make. Is this a choice that I'm making though? Yes, yes it is. So we're gonna continue to add to the Citadel. Uh, we're gonna make sure that everything is good. And yeah, okay. It now has a 25,000 kilometer range. And uh, it actually handles really well. It actually does all right. It actually has some gusto. Uh, so you don't have to get rid of your old uh, you don't have to get rid of your old guys. You, you just got to keep um, keep loving on them. I know some people are going to scream, Texas is eight times more expensive than just building new stuff. And I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like a real Navy and you can't you can't tell me what to do. All right. Four months. 
It'll take four months to refit that bastard, which is fine. Then we have to refit the Franz Ferdinand, and there's only two of those, so I'm pretty sure I could refit those things. I just need to look at my dockyard. Uh-huh. All right. We should be okay for the most part. I'm trying to rebuild also my transport fleet. So let's get into ship design and refit the Franz Ferdinand, which is a really cool ship. It's certainly a product of the 20s. It's got some very standard battleship uh, feels to it. So we're, we're getting there. Turbo electric. It says it's overweight now. No, it won't be, because Krupp armor. Oh, yeah. Let's put more reinforced bulkheads in there, baby. And any flooding measures? Oh, uh, we have to actually walk that back a bit. Yeah, this thing's gonna be all right. And by all right, I mean it's it's gonna be way expensive, but that's fine. Uh, it's got what we need on it. It, it makes the Navy go. And yeah, it has excessive pitch. I don't care. It also has 14 inch guns, which are really neat. And it has enough small caliber firepower to keep the little boats at bay. Hopefully, maybe. I hope to build better battleships than these though. I, I do hope to do that. I'm putting a lot more stock in the battle cruisers I've made. Um, I intend to make very big battle cruisers in the future for global operations boat. You know, we can we can do that Weltschmerz idea. And uh, here we go. Let's see. Uh, Franz Ferdinand will now be refit because four years after it's made, it needs some work. I'll delete the original. And then we have Ersatz Mark II, which is going to be neat. Okay, 42 millions of dollar dues. <laughs> oh boy. Well, here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure we don't shit the bed. And we're going to make sure we're doing well as we can. So, let's do this. Uh, yep, Italian Empire wants to be our friend. And that's fine. France is open to friendship. They're, they're not saying that we won't kill you. They're just saying that it's unlikely you will die by us today. Gonna still try to make Great Britain happy because Great Britain is pretty big and scary and I don't need to fight a global empire. Global empires scare me. And our crew pool is still relatively small, so having a smaller navy is kind of a smart idea. Once those battleships are refit, I will slowly start refitting the battle cruiser fleet. The battle cruiser fleet is kind of key to what I need to do. I'm also going to need to fight Japan. Uh, there's no way around it. Last time I fought Japan, they were actually pretty tough. So this is going to be a challenge. Japan likely has built just more of their very good battleships. And last time around, you saw that just a few years of technology, just a decade of technology was more than enough to overmatch my boats, which were reasonable when they were designed, old when they were laid down, and ancient by the time they saw combat. And that can happen. Also, I think it's funny the Soviet Union has to go through my territory to launch ships out of Sevastopol, so I might just take that from them. I might just have to beat them up. I might have to go break their legs. I might have to show up and be like, hey, knock, knock. And they say, who's there? And I'm like, leg breaker. And they're like, leg breaker who? And I'm like, me. And then, you know, the the oompa music starts. Also, Japan has been building submarines, which is alarming. I, I just noticed that. We have not been putting as much technology in the submarines because we're, the, we're a Mediterranean power that somehow stumbled into more territory that it knows what to do with. But in one month, the Franz Ferdinands will be ready, and then I can uh, fight Japan. I think I will be ready to, at least. I know I will probably fight and lose with my destroyers first off, but if they can cripple or destroy enough of the Japanese fleet, they buy time for my battleships to arrive, and I can design and build new destroyers to replace them. Because this is only a peacetime budget, which means if I go to war, I can get my wartime budget, and the wartime budget is where you make your money. I think it's funny the Middle East has largely stayed independent. Frequently in this game you'll find Britain or France will start trying to make plays for the Middle East, and once they get their foot in, 
it's hard to get them out. They will just start taking things. They'll go, ooh, give me that. Ooh, oil. Ooh, give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Then they'll make a mistake. They'll go try to take Afghanistan. And Afghanistan is the graveyard of empires. You don't, you don't go there. It's, it's just terrifying. Leave them alone. All right, building new ships. Looks like America is continuing to build. The Spanish Empire is back, baby, but it's much smaller than it used to be. And it's, it's just the hat of Spain right now. That's all right. It's just not, it's not as big or as powerful as it used to be. And yeah, we're going to slowly start building better submarines as best we can. I'm hoping to build better ships in time. But we've got three battleships that are being refit, and that will change. So I'm going to go ahead and kick Japan in the toes and hope that they leave me alone. For the most part, notice how my budget just shot up. My battleships are done. However, if we go to war, my budget's going to explode. And that is where I can finally get what I want. I can start building replacement destroyers. Uh, I'm gonna tell Japan to fuck off, and now we're at war again. And that's okay. You just have to poke them in the face. You just have to say, hey, Japan, what's up? And they go, I don't know. And you're like, uh, I don't like you. And they go, that's not nice at all. And we're like, I know. Then you have a fight. So, there we go. Ah, uh, yes, we're starting to get into modern battleships. Excellent. By that, they mean the modern fast battleship concept. So, we are now going to take our two battleships, and we're going to move them over here to fight Japan. We're going to send them over there, and then we're going to take our battle cruiser squadron, which has been doing nothing, and we're going to send them to sit off of there, right? And then we're going to take our torpedo boat guys, which I have over here, and I'm going to send them to aggressively set off the Japanese naval base, and we're gonna do what we can. The Japanese fleet is a bit displaced right now. I have no idea what they have for their fleet. It looks like they have one battle cruiser, six cruiser, uh, yeah, they have a few submarines. It's a much smaller navy than it used to be, but let's not make assumptions on its competency. Last time we, we did that, we really paid for it. So let's, let's, not, let's not get too cocky here. What I need to do, though, is I need to take this Croatian port at Pula, and I need to do a new design, and I need very much to design a new destroyer. So we can start getting into some fun stuff, and it looks like I'm almost limited at 16,000. Yeah, all right, let's 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 leave this be for now until we can unlock, I think, 2,000 ton holes, where they're almost what light cruisers used to be when the game started. So we will be able to effectively build like 35, 37 knot uh, destroyers that I can then use to patrol everywhere and fight people, but I can also make them ASW, you know, anti-submarine warfare boats, because everyone is doing submarines. I'm also going to arrange for an overhaul of the air sats class because I need to, and then I'm going to take this off the menu for export because I don't want my dockyards filling up with all sorts of orders for things that I cannot make. Okay, it looks like that is not going to work out. Looks like it already has the best of everything. Well, fuck it. I'll, I'll just leave them as be. I'll just have to watch my orders very carefully. I'm hoping to fight Japan and win. I'm hoping to take from them an island or two. I'm hoping to just put my hands into their pockets and walk away with stuff. And I think that that'll work. I think that's what I need to do. I think I need to be just turbo belligerent, get into Japan and break its legs. And we're, we're going to do our best. We are going to do our best here. So let's see what the war brings us. In the interim, I will do my best to raise our uh, financial background. Give us some float money which we badly need because my building plans are dumb and incredibly expensive. Uh, it looks like Germany, no, I'm going to tell Germany I don't need an ally for this one. However, Japan and China are now fighting, and China is interesting. Cuba, uh-oh, Cuba's new leader is supporting terrorism. That's not good, but I don't have the tonnage to actually do anything about it. 
Unless. Unless. Habsburg. No, it's not. It's not enough boat. It's not enough boat to do it. You're lucky. What I will do instead is I will build four more Irsats too, and I will tell them to be built in. I'm gonna have them built in Croatia. I'm gonna have them build at Pula, and then I will send these boats to the New World. I will send them out to Cuba. It won't be in time to intercede in that, but it will be in time. Actually, I could probably build four more. Yeah. They they won't be in time to get out to Cuba, but they will be in time to serve my interests. And I can put the other four out here in the Philippines. So I can have four in Cuba and four in the Philippines as my rapid response boats for global operations, for regional security issues. And then I can keep the big, big fuckers in the Mediterranean. And I that way I don't have to move them far. This sounds a bit promising I know this doesn't mean it's what's gonna happen it just means this is what I hope will happen but once my battleships are here he's gonna have to fight my battleships or I'm going to take Kyushu or Honshu I'm gonna take some of these islands I'm gonna gobble them up I, that or I could take Hokkaido from him and it, I'll just I'll just box him in Excellent. Turtleback armor scheme. Nice. Denmark regains the full control of Iceland. I don't know what Denmark's doing, but I probably sold them enough ships to destroy the world, so... I'm not gonna complain. My clients are free to do whatever they want. They, they are absolutely free to pursue free navigation of the sea, however they like. Alright. Looks like we have an ambush. It could be submarines ambushing my boys. However, if it's a naval ambush on the open ocean, the only things that are crawling out there are the battleships, and I don't think that's a good idea. All right, modern battleship hull design. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see, hydrophone stations? Yep, we're getting there. We're starting to get better stuff. Ambush. Uh, yep. Yep, let's fight it. Let's fight these fuckers. The idea is I'm going to whittle his navy down so by the time my battleships show up, uh, he is deeply softened versus what I'm doing. Looks like only four of my destroyers were in position. He's got some interesting boat design. I'll give him that. Doesn't mean I'm going to let him win, though. So the idea is these torpedoes have a 12-kilometer range, which is great. Not for him, but for me. I'm going to uh, do what I do best. Oh my god, my guys are already smonking them. Alright, I'm going to... Oh, one just blew up. That's fantastic. Another one blew up. Alright. And another one blew up. These are not the greatest in torpedoes. Oh, oh, alright. Speed it is. Alright, my guys are reloading. Dud torpedo. Wow, we actually hit a guy at range. Hot damn. That's amazing. Alright, my goal is to just cruise by and let him have some of that torp. As he tries to torp me back. Holy crap, he has fast torpedoes. All right, so Japan has continued their really good torpedo uh, technology stuff, but that's always been true of Japan. Japan's always had really good torps. All right, and we're going to cruise on in. We're going to cruise on in. We're going to cruise on in. We're going to get going. And we're going to just start some fires. Yeah, he's probably going to beat my guys up, but that's fine. I want him to know what he's getting into. Uh-oh. Sharp turn, boys. Sharp turn, don't let him do it. Yep, you lose. I'm going to beat him up. I'm going to tell him to use whatever they like. I'm going to tell my guys to keep turning in. And we're almost, we're halfway reloaded. Excellent. He hasn't been able to sink them yet. He's he's bonked a few of my boys, but he hasn't he hasn't beat them up to the point of them dying. I've set him on fire. 
So far, even trade. Nothing too crazy. Um, he certainly has a lot more firepower than I do. And his torpedoes have a range of only four kilometers. Interesting. However, they do 54 knots. Holy shit. No wonder they're hard to miss. Like, they, they are, they are just porpoising through the water. That is a lot of torp. All right, my guys are about halfway reloaded here. And I doubt they're gonna get a chance to reload once we get within range, because uh, sooner or later, we're gonna run into trouble here. Our my guys are doing some good damage on this asshole. This is an older cruiser as well. Older design profile on the hull. Certainly very antique. And we're just gonna keep circling the wagons here and being annoying, because I'm pretty sure I can get him. He's gonna keep firing torpedoes off though, and if I get lucky, what I can do is I can get him to torp his own dude, if I get lucky, because he is just turning every which way and dropping torps in the water. Fortunately, his light cruiser is starting to hit my dudes and do a lot of damage to him, which is unfortunate, but that's kind of what I predicted. They have a lot of light secondaries. They have very good crew training. Oh, man. Looks like his torps are not the biggest torpedoes, though. They're 19-inch torpedoes. Man, he is good with torps. His crews have a lot of training. And by that, I mean they have actual training. They haven't had to cannibalize their navy multiple times. Uh, yeah. He is just firing torpedoes every which way. He's sinking my boys. This makes us sad. That's fine. If I can cause some damage to these guys and prevent them from doing stuff like laying mines, that's more than fine. Looks like I only have one left and he's getting them. Which is unfortunate. I may be able to get some torps off before I die, but I doubt it. His, uh, his torpedoes are exceptionally fast. And that's what makes them hard to miss. He has the range. Not, well, not really. But he has enough range to do knife fight torpedo stuff. Okay, I just fired those three off. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's good hits. That's good hits. He is going to have some problems, to say the least. He's not going to sink before the end of the match, which is unfortunate, but I did cause enough damage to put him out of the fight. I, I lost a bunch of little dudes on a ship, which is sad. That is sad. I, I had my Taffy 3, but... They managed to give a pretty decent acquittal for themselves. That and I learned a lot about their torpedoes in that engagement. I'm going to take that knowledge and make sure that they don't get close to me. Very close in torpedoes, very high speed, very accurate. They're little knife fight torpedoes, which are pretty dangerous. However, my battle cruisers and shit are gonna show up over here and beat the hell out of them. And that's what I want. I want to fight this guy. Also, it looks like I just delivered the last set of my ships to foreign ports, so I got money for it. Ha ha. So it's January 1924, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire is still a thing. However, unrest is starting to crawl up, and that is problematic, to say the least. I can now build pretty big heavy cruisers, which is nice. I can also do 22-inch torpedoes, which is also very nice. Girthy torpedoes mean more room for bang-bang. That is what is important. You get more room for explosives, you get more room for propellant, you get more room for engine, you get more room for stuff like gyroscopes. This allows you to do a lot more with your torpedoes. And my battleships are almost there because they're pretty fast battleships. Doesn't look like he has much of a home squadron here which means I could probably take Kyushu. 
What I'm going to have to do is fight this guy within an inch of his life, though. He is not going to go gently. I have every feeling this guy is going to be really annoying to fight. And that's okay. That is more than okay. I just need to earn it. That's what it means. China's interesting in this playthrough because most of it's British. The central eastern part of China, to include very big ports like Shanghai and Hangzhou, are certainly uh, in Chinese control. And then they also control Manchuria. It's just in between. They don't have a lot. Okay, here come my battleships. The first fight of my battleships, four years after they were originally laid down, and just a few months after their refits. So, the only two of their class, which is kind of an American way of building battleships. Build two, adjust technology, build two. Oh, and I'm already in range. Excellent. Yeah, my main battery has a range of... 24 kilometers with the AP shells. Not bad. Question is, are they accurate? The first shots are typically not. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cruise along. Oh, hell yes. That's a hit. I'm going to tell my secondaries to be aggressive as shit. Just because I can. And then I'm going to bump this down to half speed. Until they come into range. That's good shots. Good job, boys. A lot of smonk. Very proud of you. Yeah, go ahead and shoot at me. Go ahead. This guy's laying smoke down as he approaches. But, uh, yeah. He's, he's not having luck getting through my armor, per se. Not yet. So he's starting fires, which is exactly what I'd be doing. His light cruiser seems to be taking some rather serious fire. Well, there goes that guy. Oh, his battle cruiser's coming right in. He doesn't give a fuck. He's got 9-inch guns on that, shitloads of secondaries, and a lot of the really terrifying short-range torpedoes. That being said, um, he just exploded. And he's still cruising forward as he burns. Holy shit, that had 1,900 dudes on it. Now it's just a funeral pyre. That's metal as fuck. Alright, we're gonna try to heal this ship over to the right. Actually, no. We're gonna heal it over to the left. A little bit of navigational confusion there. I thought I could turn around it, but that's not going to happen. That cruiser is booking at amazing speed. We're going to wait till we clear this guy, and then we're going to turn. Right as we clear this guy, we're going to turn. And he's dropping twerps. Thank God for hydrophones. Holy shit, look at all those twerps. I took three. Very fast torpedoes. So we took some damage, but I managed to sink his fleet. Um, we just have to beware. His torpedoes are terrifying. They are very fast. It's just by the time you see them, they're in range. And you need to be on your terminal maneuvers. This isn't like World of Warships where you can do torpedo beats easily. These ships tend to move and maneuver and stop and answer helm. Like you'd expect a torpedo to... Well, they... <clears throat> A ship under torpedo attack to do. So I managed to sink his boys, and he's not begging for surrender yet, which means I've barely scratched him from his point of view. Let's see what we could do. I'm going to need all the tonnage known to man to take Kyushu, because that has a big boy port in it, and his whole battle fleet's in there. His whole battle fleet's in there, son of a bitch. All right. So with these ships, I might have enough. I might have enough to try to take this from him, uh, but I'm, I'm highly doubting it. So I'm going to put the destroyers within range. I'm going to move my battleships over here, 
and I'm gonna hope that he comes out to fight. I'm gonna hope he does. Let's see what happens. In the meantime, I'm going to build more battle cruisers because I'm not an idiot. I, well, okay, let's back up. I'm an idiot in many, many ways. But I'm not going to make this easy for him. All right, so let's see where we are now. Britain seems to be moving against us, which isn't good. Um, I'm going to auto-resolve this fight. Looks like we didn't lose much, but he lost some stuff. Japan is really fighting Italy right now, which is bizarre to me. But I'm going to just continue building my shipyards as big as I can. And I'm going to hope that Britain really doesn't hate us that much. Because they still have a lot of territory. They've lost a bit of India, but they control enough of China and all this down here. And they're starting to conquer all this. So, problematic. Problematic to say the least. I need to be ready. And it looks like, uh, yep, there's my combined battle fleet, which is going to sit there. And I'm just going to go into and try to invade. I'm going to try, oh, it's not going to give me that yet. He has some attack submarines, and he has some mine-laying submarines, which is good. I am on low fuel with all my guys, which is not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to take Shikaku first. We're going to do that. I know that's going to put me with an action radius of submarine that's probably laying mines. Yes, I will probably take some casualties from this, but I'm going to try to remove some islands from this guy. I'm going to try to make him realize that I'm slicing his homeland up and maybe get him to be less of an asshole. I'm going to say we don't negotiate with our enemy. Looks like other nations think we're cool. Probably because we like smoke in the locker room. We really need people. And then we're going to do range finders. We're going to just put a lot of money into range finders so we can find the people and hurt their feelings all the better. Now, I'm going to go into an invasion, and I'm going to say, give me the little island. I want the little island. I want the starting island for Chosakabe and Shogun 2. That's what I want. Alrighty, let's see. Uh, German Empire looks like they're going to try to help us out. China's having some problems, which I can understand. Um, we're mobilizing to invade. Looks like we got a 51% chance. I'm going to move my destroyers down here within the circle of invasion. Just to give a little bit of extra tonnage. He's probably going to try everything in his power to break it up. He's going to do his best to break up my invasion. And that's fine. That's fine. However, soon I will have eight more battle cruisers. And then once I have all those built and designed the way I like them, I will do my best to build something grand, something Habsburgian. I, I want to build something tremendous. I, I want something that says this empire has no idea what it's doing, but it likes spending money. And I think that is kind of key to playing as the Austro-Hungarian Empire. You need to make sure that everyone thinks you're crazy. And that's that's kind of what you should do, is is you you should really just go all out. So we've got our invasion starting, and I'm hoping this invasion does well because after that I'll take Hokkaido from them, and then I will have eliminated some of his ports from his shipbuilding plans, and then I just kind of slowly neuter his ability to build a large navy. So he's going to have to build a smaller, more lethal navy, and probably have torpedoes that can shoot the moon. But I can at least scare him a little bit. That's, that's the idea. You need to throw your weight around as an empire. Okay, looks like we have a meeting engagement uh, with my whole navy versus what's left of his. However, that battleship is 43,955 tons. He has a battle cruiser that's about half that. Yeah, he's he's been building. The last time we fought this guy in the previous war, he had ships at 25, 27,000 tons. So you're starting to see ships that are a lot bigger. He was building these during that war. He just didn't get them out in time. Now we're going to fight them. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to sink that. God, the lines on that almost look like something like the hood.
All right, Here, here's what we're going to do. He's going to the east. All right, we're going to send those guys to the east. These guys can do 30 knots, so I'm going to send them out first at full speed. Well, full as they can because they have low fuel. In fact, everything's on low fuel. And then I'm going to send the... Uh, oh, shit. I just folded those all in. You know what? AI can control all of these. How's that sound? I'll just let the AI do whatever. And, uh... I, yeah. All right. Yep, they can do whatever they like. I'm just gonna... I'll be the guy who drives the battleships. All right. We have contact. He's probably operating at full speed. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, my guys are definitely on the back field here. And the battlecruiser squadron is not going to be moving at 30 knots. They are at low power. Um, my battleship's the only thing capable of making speed. And we are engaging the target at 24 kilometers. My guys are wasting no time. That's pretty fucking close. Yeah, my guys are pretty good at shooting now. There's that battleship. Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, I hate the wing turret barbettes with the open rear turrets. I I hate I hate it. I really hate this thing. And it's uh why? You have a perfect place to put a turret right there. Why do you have these? I just... Uh, naval architecture sins. Sink it. Sink it. No, 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 this guy. You need to concentrate on this guy. They seem not to understand my priorities here. Now that, that destroyer, yes. Concentrate your secondaries on him. Sink that guy. Oh, hey, there we go. We hit him real good. It's not all that well armored. Which is surprising, because I'm hitting this guy right in the belt. Oh, please turn. Okay, that was amazing. That is not what I thought would happen. Alright, he is going to lose that battleship. He is not doing well. Oh, yes. It's interesting. His battlecruisers have 1,900 men. His battleships have 1,150 men. The battleship is 43,000 tons, and the battlecruiser is 28,000 tons. I'm... I'm... concerned. Is this thing just mostly open room? Is this just a giant silo full of... stuff? Like, what's going on? Maybe it's all engine. I mean, my guys are just wiping the floor with these dudes. Their battle cruisers are dangerous. Slow down. Flash fire. Ooh. That's not good. Yeah, he's not having a good day.
for taking as many main battery hits as this thing has, this is a really tough battle cruiser. Like, no, no joke. This guy's got to have a citadel that's like eight layers deep. That's two flash fires he's had. I mean, what a tough battle cruiser. Just taking nothing but 14 inch gun hits and going down. Oh look, and the conga line is here. Excellent. All right, that was a lot better. I'm hoping to do my, my best bet here. Uh, by the way, there's a good old ship explosion. <laughs> When ships blow up, uh, it's typically really bad. Uh, it's because they contain a lot of flammable material, uh, ranging from fuel to propellant to energetic materials and the munition storage. Um, yeah, we're going to fight to the end because I want to take an island. I need another coaling port, and that's where I'm going to put my new battle cruisers. Well, newer. And I, I'm going to put them over here so I can bully people. Um, looks like I have a pretty good chance here. Uh, I'm going to add this guy to my squadron uh, to take this out. Because if I can take this and take his northern islands, I, I can force him to surrender. I'll I'll just eat his government. And his people will be like, why, why is there so much goulash and chicken paprikash in Japan now? And their emperor will be like, don't worry about it. And then they'll kill him. Or they'll make him leave. Or something. I don't know. We're just going to do our best. We are going to force the Japanese to accept Austro-Hungary. I will probably get a comment from some Japanese people below who will say, like, that's not nice. And I'll say, it's funny. This is what if. What if is always funny. Especially when it comes to history. Uh, I'm just going to auto-resolve that. Go away. Netherlands wants to buy a battle cruiser. I said yes, even though I said I probably shouldn't. Actually, we have the tonnage. I could say yes about ten more times. I know I probably shouldn't because it'll nuke the budget. But hey, we're going to get a Japanese island. We'll get our very own Japanese island. We'll get our Japanese island hobby kit. But yeah, I can start to peel off some of these battle cruisers and use them as a regional uh, power. And then I can keep the big fucking battleships at home, which is where they belong. Uh, oh, submarine. I sank, oh, I didn't sink it. I damaged the shit out of it because I have a lot of destroyers. And we have Shikaku. Good job, us. All right, let's move on. Could you imagine what the, uh, okay. I, I'm going to mention this because Hutz is the editor and Hutz plays a lot of these games. Could you imagine the Yakuza games in this timeline? I, I've never played a Yakuza game. I've watched Mike and Hutz play it. I enjoyed what the game is. I can really understand how people enjoy this game. I, I'm not good at fighting games, so that's why I watch other people who play fighting games and they're they're really good at them. And I think that's wonderful. Um I think the Yakuza games are really cool. I I watched uh I watched Mike play I wanna say the Yakuza Zero. I think it's called Like a Dragon or something. Uh really cool game. Not, not for, not for me, uh, because I'm bad at fighting games, but watching him play that game was enjoyable. Even secondhand, watching him do the karaoke and all that other stuff, fucking great. I, I think that that is a game that was made with a lot of love and that impresses me. I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I hate weeb games or, oh, I hate this or, oh, I hate that. And I think there's something interesting on every plate. Uh, no, we're going to fight to the end, Japan, because even though I started this, I also intend to end it. Um, you know, start and end the fight the Austro-Hungarian way, which means hopefully not with my ships rolling over in port and accomplishing nothing. All right, in seven months, uh, I will have the next eight ersatz done, and I intend to send those out to... Uh, yeah, those are going to sit out in the Caribbean, in case America decides to do something, which they will. America is going to get really mad at me at some point. And when they do, I am going to have to have something to show for it. The problem is, is that that's America's backyard, and I have limited dockyard facilities there, which means as soon as they put a hurt on me, which they will, I will not be able to do very well. 
So I need to start planning for that war, which is going to be really, really rough. But imagine if you will, this universe's Yakuza games, because I think the Japanese are very, very interesting people. I think that they would absolutely, absolutely, absolutely still make the games they do, still do the cultural stuff they do. I just want to see what it would be like with that influence. Because if you look at the American occupation of Japan and the Zaibatsu busting that happened after uh, we left and during while we were there, you will find that Japanese culture just adopts and co-ops a lot of American stuff like baseball and Elvis and just absorbs that into their being and then continues being Japanese. It doesn't subsume their culture. It doesn't erase their culture. It just becomes, oh, we have these things now. And I would love to see what that looked like with an Austro-Hungarian influence because I don't, I don't think you could ever stop the Japanese from being Japanese. I think that this would just be a really wacky world and I kind of want to see it. And I, I like thinking about things like this when I play Hearts of Iron or whatever else. I, I like to think about what would a world look like under these circumstances. Looks like they're going to still keep trying to hit me with subs. And I don't think that's going to work. Because I'm just going to hit auto resolve. And I have a lot of anti-submarine warfare stuff in my fleet. So it just blows them away. Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. Azerbaijan's leader is trying to do something. And I, it looks like my guys are going to... Yep, the Austro-Hungarian army is going to try to march into Azerbaijan. Which... An army force of 100,000 dudes versus a defending force of 29,000 dudes. That's that's not going to go so great for them. Uh, unless my guys are stereotypically bad. In which case, I'll just laugh. Uh, I'll be like, oh no, we set ourselves on fire again. And then that happens. You know, occasionally, occasionally the dumb happens, but that's all right. See, we're starting to get into heavier destroyers as well, which means I can slowly replace my destroyer fleet with something that's a lot more global operations minded and a lot more aggressive. However, I will have to build fewer of them because they're going to be supremely expensive. All right, so let's check our politics here. Uh, looks like we finally got some new battle cruiser hulls, which is going to be nice to play with. Always nice to have new toys. Let's get into uh, politics. Uh, ooh, France and Britain both, they're allies, as you can see. And they both don't like me equally as much. That's a problem. Um, I don't have a lot of land territory uh, that shares borders with them. But that doesn't mean they won't try to beat the shit out of me. And they have a very large combined navy. Britain has only 25 ships, and looks like France has only 38 ships, but combined, that's a pretty good navy, because 7 battleships, 2 battle cruisers, 2 battle cruisers, 11 heavy cruisers, they could attrition me to death. Alright, so... Oh, looks like we're finally got some cats in the hen house. Oh, and we're starting to get into oil-fired boilers. Neat. So we can do fun stuff. We can make those ships that run on both, which means they'll spray oil on the coal. Uh, some of them did that, and it's not, it, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting transitional era of uh, of engine power plants. And, and by that, I mean it, deeply annoying and flawed. And that's all right, because we're starting to get into better drives as well. Soon, I will have diesel. And we have Hokkaido now. Good, 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 good. Let's go ahead and take one last port from them, and then we'll tell the Japanese we're ready to lay down. If they're willing to accept that, that is. I, I doubt they will. They're probably going to get really, really mad. And that's fine. I'll just go take Kyushu, or I'll, I'll go take Honshu, or, you know, I'll invade Tokyo, and I'll leave them a slice of the homeland, you know, for uh, shits and giggles. I'll just say, hey, remember when you had a country? Not anymore. And then they'll, you know probably just be okay with it because within 20 years half the Austro-Hungarian Empire will speak Japanese culturally the Japanese are very strong and it's one of those things that cannot be underestimated or understated because uh, there's a lot more Westerners that are into Japanese stuff and speak Japanese <laughs> than there are native Japanese speakers 
I I think that people don't understand the power of culture in that sense, but the Japanese are incredibly, incredibly culturally powerful. Looks like the United States took over Madagascar, which is fucking crazy. Uh, I think I'm going to end up at war with... Uh, I'm probably going to end up at war with the, the big boys here. So I'm going to need to get out of this war fairly quickly and then hope hope to build better ships fairly quickly. And I also have to adjust my finances here because we're about to go bankrupt. However, it does look like I got my battle cruisers finally out of dry dock, which is nice. Uh, they're just going to need a couple of months of fitting out, and then I can ship those off to the New World, maybe. I may hold them in Europe just for the moment while my battle fleet is elsewhere because I'm terrified. I'm a little concerned. Uh, e Europe, they, they may move against me, and considering that the Brits now have Eastern Spain as a base, and France has all of North Africa, plus its bases in Southern France, this is going to be a problem. This is potentially a very big problem. So we'll see. I'm going to continue to sink the transports. I'm going to continue to do what I can to uh, absolutely uh, wreck these guys. It looks like China collapsed again as a government, which is interesting. So we'll see what happens. It looks like I only have a 30% chance. Also, my guys are moving over land. Uh, Japan has a huge army force there. It's 1.5 million people. So I don't think that Japan is going to lose that one. I think Japan's going to be just fine. So what we need to do is we now need to make sure that the combined empire and assholes of our enemies are not going to kill us which is going to be easier said than done. I'm going to have to move a little bit back off my research, and I'm hope oh, cool, we're going to get double-geared steam turbines, which will be nice. I will then also hope to put more into armor. If I can make armor lighter, I can put more armor on my boats. That's going to be really important. I'm also going to start building bigger battleships now. I have a feeling we're going to be at war within five years versus either Britain or France or both because they think I'm an asshole. Now, when it looks to America, that's an issue. I have no idea what they're going to do, and they bother me. Going to continue to sink their transports. Going to... Oh, yes. I made France like me more. Excellent. Now I have to make Britain like me more. United States, very neutral on almost everybody. Looks like I can take Hokkaido. Once I do that, they can go away. Okay, I do have the budget right now, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our ships. We're going to tell half of them to go to Cartagena. Actually, no, that's where my destroyers are. Shit. All right, what is my biggest port here? Fuck, I'll just leave it as is. I, they don't have the dockyard for it. That sucks. All right, in four months, I should have the better engines, which should allow me to build a better boat, asterisk, and then with better boat, I should be able to defend my glorious European holdings. Hopefully, unless we trade half of it away in a marriage and a Habsburg way of solving things. They'll be like, no, no, we won't worry about it. We'd trade, we'd married into the royal family of Greece. And it's like, oh, great. And then we have a civil war and blow up. So that is, yeah, that, that would be my prediction for the Habsburgian ending of this. Italy has played pretty cool with me so far, which is nice because they're between me and France, which is useful. I'm just kind of concerned because France is still in the game and is starting to push back against Germany, and they could do a lot of damage. Now, they don't have the fleet they used to, but it seems that nobody does. It seems like everyone has attrition, their fleet's down to nothing. And I need to make sure that doesn't happen to me, uh, because that, that happens as the game goes on. From 1890 to, like, 1910, you'll find some nations in this game will build, like, 150, 200-ship fleets. 
And that's on the low side compared to what the Royal Navy had in World War I and World War II. You find some massive fucking battle fleets. The Grand Battle Fleet is huge. And so you have to be very careful. The game doesn't model this that well, so 100 ships to 200 ships is a pretty big fleet in this. I have seen some players make 800 ship battle fleets in this, but it takes a while to build. Um, let's see. I don't see a war happening with Britain. There, I said that. Uh, I've also said no. Yeah, uh, victims are inevitable in times of war, but that just happens. Um, France is fighting each other, and the United States is provoking me for some reason. Uh, Britain is playing with Belize. And by playing with, I mean not doing nice things to. Uh, I'm going to try to put some points into hull construction and armor forging, though. I need to build ships better. -er. And in three short turns, I should have Hokkaido. And at that point, I can tell the Japanese to suck it. And hopefully they'll get the memo. Uh, if not, I will be very sad. But at least I will have some ports here that can support my ships. Very important. Also going to need to design new destroyers to operate in the Pacific because the Pacific is huge and the weather is crap. So I'm going to need stuff with range and sea keeping capability. Japan just had a revolution uh, fight to the end. I'm, I'm just going to say, no, you're going to give me this and then we can do our thing. It'll be fine. Um, it looks like. Everyone's fighting out here, doing their thing. I'm leaving that alone. We're trying to take Azerbaijan for a reason. Probably the oil is my guess. I, I don't know what the Habsburgs are up to, but I'm going to say good luck. Looks like the new Japanese flag has the Imperial Chrysanthemum on it. So I'm presuming that this is an even harder line government than the last one. <laughs> that's a problem. So yeah, we're, that's not good. Is, are you saying that this is now like direct divine mandate stuff? Are the Japanese, are the Japanese going down that road? I'd be a little worried if we had another turbo Imperial Japan. I mean, it'd be cool. You'd, you'd finally get a cyberpunk that had the Japanese elements that everyone predicted in the 80s. But still, uh, it would also be terrifying. The Japanese don't half-ass anything. They're whole ass on everything. They're really good at fighting. The Japanese are pretty tough. I, I would not fuck with them. Intensity. So let's see if we can take Hokkaido from them. If not, I'll just sue for peace and keep what I got for now. Because I am definitely feeling that England is up to no good. And I have also a feeling that Japan is building even more terrifying ships right now that are probably going to be giant, fast, and lethal. And I need none of those things to sink my very sad navy. My navy is okay. Uh, except for that one Habsburg boat that I just keep working on, but I'm not getting rid of that. I'm gonna keep that baby around. It's gonna be like, please let me die, and I'll be like, no, you need gas turbines, and people will just go, why? Alright, double-geared steam turbines, eh? Even lighter on the ship. Oh, we failed to gain control of North Hokkaido. That sucks. My guys on land are not doing much better. They're losing a lot of people to do this. All right. I'm going to try to stay in war a little longer just so I can have more war budget. I know that sounds absolutely heinous, but that's kind of how this the whole war thing works. Um, we're going to try to get even better torpedoes as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to need, well, maybe not. I'm going to try to put some more research into destroyers, because as soon as we can get, you know, like 2,000 ton destroyers, that's that's where the magic is. I'm going to try one more time to take Hokkaido. Uh, America is slowly souring on us as well. If I end up having to fight Russia, though, that's where I'm worried. I have no idea how my land armies will do. I have no idea who's leading my land armies. And I'm exceptionally terrified at what may happen. I don't think Japan has any more territory to give me. Uh, I don't think they will trade away home regions. 
Uh, so if I lose or if I win the war, they're not going to give me territorial concessions. I just get to keep what I have already, which is fine, uh, but it's not enough. It's not enough to sustain what I've done. They're, they're going to go, look, we'll give you $200 million. That's all we have, and you can go fuck yourself. And I'll be like, yeah, all right. And then I take that, and then I burn it all on upgrading something, and then I feel bad. But it, it buyer's regret. That happens. So we're going to do the best we can. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, let's boost that economy. We're going to do what we can. We'll take it out of the naval budget and we'll just keep boosting that GDP. Because, uh, let's see, where's my GDP right now? Uh, we're doing pretty good. 4% uh, growth this year. Spanish Empire is really growing fast. Russia is contracting. We have more money than the Italian Empire, but far less than France, far less than Britain. And America is huge. It's growing 1.19% per month in GDP. So that's the one to watch out for. Uh, when America decides to get mad at me, I'm going to be like, please don't hurt me, Papa America. I will be very upset. Please don't kill me. I'm going to ask you not to murder me. And we're going to try to take Hokkaido again. And then I may try to take Honshu. Because if I can do that, I split the country. And he pretty much is going to do nothing from there on out. Unless he gets very bold and very crazy. And suddenly, like, Bayonet attacks me in my sleep. And then, in which case, he wins. Uh, because, again, like, screaming Japanese guy with a bayonet chart. Scary. Very scary. Hooray, center party. All right, uh, let's see. Strong police force to disperse the crowd. You know what? How much is that? That's way too much. Yeah, that's going to cost all of my money. Dissatisfied protesters. Man, that was all of my cash. This game is just... Ugh. All right, we're going to do what we can to try to take this island again. It says that he's been deeply depleted here because we've been just striking the shit out of his port. But as you can see, France is pushing into its former territory and starting to take that back. They're not out of this yet. You can have your ass handed to you in war and still crawl back in this game on a long enough timeline. And that's why I find this game mode of the campaign very rewarding. You can lose for 10 years and then slowly build your empire back, which is neat. It's very neat. I just need to be careful. I know careful is not something I do well, but I'm going to try. Also, I feel really bad for the Soviets in this. I mean, they, they're missing a bunch of ports, and if I go fight them again, I'm going to take those northern ports from them. I'm going to be like, give me Finland. And they're going to go, no, and I'll say, yes. All right, so we're building another ship for Greece, and it looks like in one more turn I will have Hokkaido. And if they don't sue for peace, I'm going to take Honshu. I'm going to take the mainland. And I'm going to say, give to me. And they're going to say, no, please. And I'll be like, I started this, so I'm going to finish it. And they're going to say, that makes no sense. And I'll be like, I know. I know. It's okay. But we're going to take these guys out. And I'm hoping to cause at least eight more revolutions or whatever I can to keep these guys out of the fight for a bit. Because Japan really bothers me. Uh, I'm going to agree to a peace terms because I just took their island. I'm going to be like, sure. Sure. I control Hokkaido now. The Austro-Hungarian Empire can add yet another language to its enormous amount of languages it speaks. And now I have this port that can carry all of this boat stuff, which is nice. So I'm going to tell my guys to get back into port, and I'll just aggressively pursue peace in the meantime. And I can only imagine Austro-Hungarian hibachi, like chicken paprikash tonkatsu. I'm going to get some letters over that. People are going to go text, that's the worst thing ever. And I'll be like, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen, I've seen their uh, wide variety of interesting Kit Kats they make. I don't know if that's the worst thing. I've seen a lot of interesting things that Japan makes food-wise. Now, if you ever want a interesting um, acid trip of an experience, I would say go look at the 
fun, fun, fun thing that was common, especially in the 80s, when the Japanese were really on the rise economically and really a hot thing for commercialization, go look up what's called Japandering, which is something that American and European uh, actors would do. They would go to Japan to try to sell themselves as a spokesman for product. So you find like Tommy Lee Jones selling coffee. You find Arnold Schwarzenegger selling ramen. Give me the Marianas. They won't, they'll just give me money. That's fine. They're not making terri territorial concessions. But look, I now control parts of Hokkaido. So what we're gonna do is the two battleships are being worked on. Uh, I'm gonna tell all these destroyers and uh, all these other guys to stop being a fleet and being and be a limited fleet. Just please don't, please don't spend money on gas. Ah, uh, boy. Yeah, all the ersatz classes, I'm gonna leave them where they are. I'm gonna tell you guys, you are a limited fleet now. Do not, do not do anything. There we go. And then I'll move my last two battleships back to the home ports and I'll keep my gang of dudes in Hokkaido. And I'll just leave these guys as the Pacific Operations Squadron. I'll move my battleships back to my mainland and I will slowly start overhauling everything as best I can. Um, let's make sure that we're doing as much as we can in armor forging and everything else. Uh, let's see, let's take all of these guys. We're gonna move these to Wakanaikinai. I, I don't know what that is. I can't pronounce that. I'm. I, I'm not good at languages other than English, and arguably not even that. Is it pronounced Wakanai? Wakanai? What? See, I'm not good at Japanese. I'm not good at most languages. At any rate, I own Hokkaido. So, ha. I'm gonna get letters. People are gonna say, how dare you? Or there's gonna be people who are in Japan who are like, thank you for trying to pronounce this word. You pronounced it incorrectly. I find the Japanese are actually really nice people. Um, every single one I've met has, has been just absolutely overjoyed that I know a little bit about their country and culture. I'm not a weeb. Uh, I don't know, I don't watch anime. I, I don't know a lot of this stuff that seems to be common to weebery. Um, but I, I do know enough to just pretty much try to like everybody best I can. And let's see. Okay, got all that, got all that, got all that. Excellent. So now we're going to take our two battleships that are sitting there and we're going to say, boys, you're going back to Odessa for a refit. There you go. Your job is to move out. Looks like our finances are slowly stabilized. Not that that's going to stay true for long. And we're going to try to do our best to just catch up on technology and blow people out of the water. Uh, I'm going to need to replace all my destroyers, and I'm going to need to start building those new ships that I promised. I know that our shipyard size is huge, and that's fine. Um, but I'm going to need to build an export battleship in order to feed my own industry, and then I'm going to need to build a battleship for me. All right, and then I have to stay out of a war with the big boys uh, because it looks like Britain is really pissed off and I really don't want to fight them. I want Britain to go away. I want Britain to be... Please go away. Uh, the Ersatz class is going to be fine for now. The boat class destroyer I'm getting rid of as a design. And then I'm going to overhaul the Habsburg again. Some of you are going to be very mad that I keep overhauling this boat, but I'm going to tell you that that's my business. <laughs> I'm boatman. I, I I make the boat fancier. And so if you're going to go, please just let it die. And I'll be like, come on, give him a chance. He could be cool. He could be a cool guy. All right. I think I'm going to build at least... 20 destroyers, 20 of the new ones for each theater of operations. Uh, let's see. Uh, boy, these these guys are really not liking me all that much, which is unfortunate. We're going to start getting into better steel uh, to try to lower the armor cost, which is absolutely important. 
Um, you know, we're starting to get into high mixture TNT, which is good stuff. Good stuff. France has certainly expanded its hegemony over the world. Germany is certainly uh, getting into crazy places. Netherlands wants to buy some stuff, and that's fine. That that'll keep my that'll keep my industry turning. Uh, let's get into armor quality and hull strengthening. Uh, we're about to get into a nineteen hundred ton destroyer, which is getting to where I need them. I I want to build big, big, big boy destroyers. I want to carry like 15 torpedoes per destroyer. I want to just see the enemy on the horizon and then just fan out a million. I want to make it bullet hell, essentially, for them. So even if I lose, I want us all to lose. I want everyone to suddenly be chock full of torpedoes and be like, why is my boat doing rollover tricks? And I'll be like, because fuck you, that's why. All right, so my battleships are going to get there. Man, they are fast, and that's nice. Uh, and then I can overhaul them, and I can start overhauling the Ersatz, and I can slowly start phasing out the old destroyers, and I can give the uh, once a semi-decade semi overhaul to the Habsburg just to keep it, you know, in its prime. Oh. Says I could take Eastern China... All right, well, I have 159,000 tons. What do I need? That's way more than I got. That is way more than I got. I don't, I'm not sure if that's worth it. Uh, how long do I have? I mean, it says it'll take a while. Uh, I just got these things home. So I'm going to tell you guys to just sit there and chill out. Um, my battle cruisers are not that fast. So I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to ignore this Eastern China holding thing because that that seems like a good way of getting a uh, good way of getting clapped and I don't I don't want to do that. I really don't. Whole form optimization. Yes. We're going to build some good stuff. Yeah, I'm going to leave that China thing alone. That's not for me. That and it would give me a land territory that's got the Germans, the British, and the French all on different sides of me. I think I would be massively overextended. Where were you when Tex urged healthy caution? Yeah, I know. That's probably making some of you go, what the fuck? And I'll be like, don't worry about it. I'm fine. I'm fine. No one's replaced me. The healthy caution will go out the wind window soon enough. So we're going to take this uh, really simple, fancy battle cruiser, and uh, we're going to we're going to put the even better engines on it. And let's see, it's kind of mm, mm, mm. that'll help. More anti torp. More Citadel. More everything. Now, on paper, it probably doesn't look all that different. But it, it is. It is different. We are slowly building these things to be slightly better. This one now has sonar. How cool is that? So we're going to make that main belt a little thicker. And we're going to make that inner deck armor a little thicker there. And uh, good enough. The Ersatz too. This could be a pricey overhaul. But that's okay. That's what these things are supposed to be. I will then delete the standard Assad's hull. I will overhaul what I got to make these a little better. I'm hoping to get more range, more endurance, more resilience, more reliability out of these things. Because I'm going to be needing them. These are essentially very heavy cruisers. Until the 30s when they will just be battleship sized medium to heavy cruisers. They're just going to be really weird for people, and I'm going to be like, don't worry about them. So I'm going to refit, and I'm going to do one, two, three, four. I'm going to refit four at a time, because that will not... Oh, I could do more. All right, let's... let's. I'm just trying not to cripple my shipyards. All right, yep, it'll be three months. 
and in then three months I can do the other set. I can do the other eight. Meanwhile, America is building ships like crazy. Ah, uh, yeah, this is where it's going to start getting nuts. Okay, let's try to stay out of a war. Uh, England is really gunning for me. And I need them to go away. I, I need England to not be scary to me anymore. So I'm going to just keep doing what I do. I need, I need that to happen. I need, I need it to be cool. Please, Ingerland, do not, do not hurt my feelings. I have so very few of them. But my boat pride is pretty big, and I need you to not scare me there. Also, please, Soviets, don't invade. <laughs> They have a lot of people, and I'm worried that if they invaded, I wouldn't be able to respond at the sea very well, because all that shit up there in the Baltic Sea is a bastard to get around, and I may piss off every nation in that region, and they will all just start shooting me in the dick at once. It, it will be like, it, it's going to be bad. It's going to be really bad. So I need that to not happen. All right, let's see. Uh, Soviet Union and blah, blah, blah. Whole form optimization. All right, there we go. Looks like France has regained its territory and is now pushing into Germany. Uh, oof. Ah, yes. 16-inch guns. I have an idea. Some of you are already saying text no, and I'm saying you text, text yes. That's, that's how this... See, this hasn't gone away yet. You know why? Because it's a trap. It's not real. Now let's refit the Habsburg. Let's refit the Habsburg. Some of you are going to say put 16-inch guns on it. They won't fit, trust me. They will be like a third of its weight. All right, so let's refit this guy. Do the best we can. Uh, we're going to take the towers off and see if we can't put uh, fancier towers on there. I doubt it, but every little bit counts for something this old. Um, I can now put, like, quad torpedo deck tubes on it. That's hilarious. All right, so these are 9-inch guns, which are okay. Uh, geared turbines, too, of course. Uh, it's going to get all the best stuff. It's being converted over on the engine. Uh, it will cost a fortune. I can't really make it go any faster because the hull was not designed for it. I, I'm using the maximum power it has. I, I've, the power of God and anime on my side is, is not going to make this thing run any faster. Okay, it looks like I can only put one funnel. And even then, it's overweight. Oh, no. All right, so what we have to do... What can I do on the centerline guns? Nine inches is the smallest gun I can make these things. All right, let's 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 knock some armor off the belt. I know that's going to make some people sad, but it, it was over-armored anyways. 13-inch belt is more than handsome for something of this period. Uh-huh. And then it's just going to have absolutely incendiary shells in case I run into somebody. Its engine efficiency is through the roof. And I take that armor I stripped off it and put it right back in the uh, citadel. So this thing is a bastard. Oh, yeah. Go, go, Habsburg. It's like, please, it's obsolete. No, it needs new engines. It needs bigger engines. It needs to go to the moon. And people are like, oh, my God. The Habsburg battleship. I can't make it really go any faster until I get stuff like, you know, gas turbines and stuff. And even then... It may be a challenge, uh, because you're going to get into diminishing returns. Uh, you're going to find that hydrodynamic shear, just the whole size doesn't like it. It's it's going to be, please, please don't do this. Please. And I'll be like, it's okay. All right, look. There. Okay, there. All right, we're going to delete the old one. There we go. And then... Just making sure... Habsburg getting refit. Hell yeah. It's getting its annual. It's getting its annual physical. Replace all the old metal. Replace all the old wood. 
All right, now we're gonna refit the other battle cruisers. And once we've done that, we refit the battleships. And then once we do that, we'll be all right. Uh, more GDP, excellent. 2200 ton destroyers, hell yeah. All right, now, now we're gonna get into the Franz Ferdinand class. These things need a refit. A little long in the tooth, and that's okay. All right, Dreadnought 4 is absent. No, it's not. Just needs a second life. All right, let's remove that and that and that. And let's do main guns, centerline guns. Uh, where's my 16 inch batteries? Why won't, why? Show me the 16 inch guns. God fucking damn it. The game, the game does not want me to have them. All right, that's fine, that's okay. I'll just force an outcome. Don't worry about it. I'll get my way. You watch. All right, so we upped it to 15 inch guns, had to remove a bit of gun from it. Still says the pitch is excessive, which I think is bullshit. So we're gonna put better turbines in there. We're gonna finally convert it over to better stuff. It says the pitch is still really bad, which, yes. Yes, it would be. Not an exceptional hull design, but it's a hull design of all time. We're gonna move to incendiary, we're gonna move this, we're gonna move that, and then we're gonna put in the better range finders, because we're starting to get into that point where we need to see them far before they see us. And look at this, we're gonna do a, f oh yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, let's see if we can get her a little faster, shall we? Hell yes we can, 28 knots. Okay, 28 knots is not gonna happen, 27 knots. 27 knots will happen. All right, now I'm going to remove some funnels just for a little bit of extra tonnage. Engine efficiency is at 100%. We have a little bit more weight. And we have more room to play with. All right, let's take these five inch guns off here. And what are these? These are five inch guns. All right, let's remove these. Normally in a refit of this era, they would have plated these over, but it, that's not what happens here. So we're gonna put eight inch guns down here in the casemates, cause that's fucking cool. I know that's not gonna hit anything, but I don't care. Uh, and then we're gonna do, ooh, a bunch of these little three inch guns as uh, in a torpedo boat guns. There we go. Hell yeah. Oh, there we go. Put those up there. So, we have anti-torpedo boat guns, anti-cruiser guns, and everything else. It's still not a perfect ship, but it's it's still a lot cooler. And the Franz Ferdinand will live on as 15-inch gun batteries, so we're starting to get into, you know, really reasonable guns. Now, this is a bit like a Bayern class from World War One or right before World War One, and then into World War One. And those guns pioneered the gun layout that was used on the Bismarck and Tirpitz. Um, so it's not a bad gun layout. It's, it's a really reasonable battery. What I'm going to do is try to pursue as vigorously as possible as I want to get 16-inch uh, guns, like badly. I want that extra range. 16-inch guns are about the sweet spot when it comes to naval gunnery. Uh, a lot of people think that, yes, you can, well, you could build, you know, 18-inch guns, Tex. You could build what the Yamato had. And I'll go, right, but a 16-inch super heavy shot penetrated the Yamato. They had a section of hull plate. They tested this. 16-inch guns were just fine. You just keep evolving the ammunition. That, we could put quad gun turrets on stuff, and it looks really neat. I just unlocked 16-inch guns, Belize. I'm not interested in Belize. Uh, they can fuck off. Not interested. I just unlocked 16-inch guns, so that means my next battleship can have them. Hoping to get better... Oh, yeah. Secondary triple turrets for capital ships. Hell, yeah. So I can have triple 5-inch gun mounts or triple 3-inch gun mounts, which is like a 76-mil gun, which is perfect for fighting destroyers and torpedo boats. That is more than perfect. It's also really decent versus light cruisers. 
because you can just saturate them with HE. You can burn everything on the deck down. You can knock the range finders out. You can knock the radio mass down. You can destroy all the observation deck. You can just crush everything. It's great. Uh, opinion about submarines. I have no opinion. I'm just going to be like, I don't care. And they're going to be like, well, everyone else has. I'm going to be like, okay. And they're going to be like, but, well, I mean, should we do that? And I'll be like, I don't know. I'm a boat guy. Submarines sink. You yell at me when I do that with the boats, and they're going to just stare at me. And I'll make dad jokes like that. That's what I do. All right. Look, let's see. Uh, three months to refit those. And then we will build our new battleships. Excellent. Actually, we should probably start building destroyers. But I can build those in wartime. By that I mean I can ignore the problem until it becomes far worse. So that's what we'll do. Britain and the United States are going to war, which means, thankfully, they'll be too busy. Uh, let's see. And, oh, wow. You know what? The Eastern China thing kicked off again. I, I will not... I will not look a gift horse in the mouse. Mouse? Yeah, look, look a gift horse in the mouse. There we go. Tex didn't have a stroke. He was born this way. Let's move all of these ships in and uh, let's try to take it. I mean, it it's going to cost all the money, which is great, I guess. I have to lower my budget, so I'll tell those nerds in the science department, like, hey, copy someone else's homework for a bit. And they're going to be like, but why? And I'll be like, because we're broke. Because they're trying to take China and they're going to just stare at me. Just why? And I'll say, don't worry about it. If anything is my motto, that's the one. Don't worry about it. All right, boys. Let's do what we do. Let's go do that thing. The naval invasion thing we do all the time. We're really good at this whole Navy invade stuff. We're good at Navy invade. All right, here we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The United States is doing its thing. I'm going to just... Oh, God, Britain really doesn't like me. Right as I move capital ships out, they're just they're just going to try to break my legs. Those sons of bitches. All right. But I'm going to see if I can't take Eastern China. Shanghai and Hangzhou are amazing shipyards. And that will allow me to build more ships for export. It'll also allow me to just dockyard all this stuff. I mean... I, I lack the ability to operate a lot of my boats I have designed in my head because the dockyards are insufficient. So this, this will allow me to do what I want. And with dockyards this size, I could keep both of those battlecruiser fleets in the east because I'm probably going to need them. If war starts with Britain, I need to snap up all their territory in the east. If, if I can do that, I can then cripple them economically. However, I also have to safeguard all of my shit in the East, which is going to be expensive. I can then focus on super heavy capital ships for continental Europe and then fold in some very advanced destroyers to go hunt the enemy down, which is pretty neat. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Uh, all right. So United States is trying to invade South Africa. Interesting. Uh, I, wow, um, that's, that's different, but hey, you know, I'm just keep me out of it. Uh, been trying to improve relations with Britain and France, but it doesn't seem that Britain is interested. Also, it appears the Soviet Navy is already over here trying to take advantage of this conquest thing, which is a problem. That is a problem to say the least. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep trying to play the political game. France is fine doing what it does. Britain needs to be, please don't hurt me. I, I don't want them to do that. My ships are probably two, three turns away. Uh, I don't have enough tonnage yet. However, I should have just over the tonnage I need to conquer Eastern China. However, what we need to do now is we need to design a newer, bigger, badder battleship. That's what we need. Modern battleship. I can also do modernized dreadnoughts, which are neat. Um, 
it's it's pretty much what I've already done, though. I've just been more or less doing that anyways. I can also start getting into advanced uh, destroyers, but let's just do a modern battleship and let's build two of them. 81,000 tons. Well, I only know one word for this. White Tom. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the... Uh, yes. I'm going to put the... Right there. Okay. And then we're going to put... the Put that there. And then put that there. Okay. Good and good. Main guns. All right. Let's see. Mm-hmm. 16 inch guns on this is what we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna definitely be cool 16 inch guns hell yeah we're gonna be that navy that gets this right first and people are gonna go wow that seems like a lot of firepower and i'm gonna be like yep so secondaries uh casemates i don't have any so this is my first ship that has none um I'm going to have all of these secondary five inch triple mounts for just reasons. That's going to be cool. So anytime anybody wants a piece of me, it's, it's going to be rough. Uh, let's try to get this bitch up to 30 knots. She can do it. Um, now let's put deck torpedo tubes. I want to have some torps just as an option. Um, I know that that's not always practical in a battleship, but... I would like some as an option uh, to hurt their feelings. Balanced. All right, Crump. Yep, we're going to do that. We're going to do Barbette 4. We're going to do this. We're going to put Triple Hull all the way around. And we're going to do Anti-Flood. And we're going to make this a fancy ship. As fancy as can be. However, I have every prediction those torpedoes are going to take one hit and explode horribly. And that's fine. But these torpedoes are going to sit around essentially as a dissuasion against somebody coming too close. All right, so it has all the things I need on this ship, and it does still have some pitch problems, but they, man, what doesn't? All right, so then we put this there, 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 and we put this there. All right, so. Now we have all the armor known to man. And this is what we're going to do, is we're just going to over-armor the shit out of this thing, and then I'm going to invite people to try to fight it. This is too much boat for Austro-Hungary to ever build, which means it's perfect. Wide Tom it is. I will build two of them, they will bankrupt me, but I will build them. And I might even sell them to nations who have no business operating super capital ships because I'm Austro-Hungary and that's what I do. Then having two of these guys is really cool. I, I think that I should just be able to go out there and kick the shit out of people and have fun. And that's what you do with the Navy is you're supposed to go out there and be like, hey, remember that time you had those boats? And they're going to be like, yeah. And I'll be like, no, no not anymore. Also, these are $2.4 billion in 1927 money, so they are twice as expensive nearly as the Franz Ferdinand. Um, I'm going to build only two of them, and they will bankrupt the whole Navy. And that's fine. They're going to take 34 months to make, and they will probably need refit as soon as they're done. Uh, I will have them built in Pula, and yeah, they're going to be heinously expensive. And that's fine. I'm going to have to move the budget around just to afford them. France has its territory back. And now that it has territorial integrity and it owns this whole swath of Africa. That's interesting. Soviet Union and Italy is fighting. Germany and Italy is fighting. Uh, Britain has finally agreed that I don't need to die today. Uh, that's that's fantastic. I, I've managed to get them off the fence about tattooing my ass to the wall. Ah, uh, boy. It looks like it's going to take forever for my guys to invade China. Uh, my guys are trying to get in range, but they just don't have the speed. The two wide toms I got are going to bankrupt me for the foreseeable future to include any of my destroyer plans, which is fine. Um, I have no interest in being pals with Germany. I don't have that kind of money. Um... I'm going to... Oh, does this make unrest? No, it makes unrest go down. Good. And we're going to do what we can to make unrest go down. 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to, yeah, that one right there. We're going to do the best we can. I'm trying to grow my GDP as much as possible. Jamaica? No, I'm not going to go invade Jamaica. Jesus. Austro-Hungarian Jamaica is not something the world is ready for. I I just don't see it. I don't see umpa music and reggae music combining. It might. But I don't see it as being practical. I see it as being dumb, which, well, all right, we could do it. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Excellent. Britain is coming around. They're starting to realize that I'm an okay guy. Seems that I have a 47, 47% chance. I'm going to move the destroyers down here just to give it an, an even better shot. Um, I'm going to move my other torpedo boats in here to get a bit a better shot. I'm going to do everything I can to give this a better shot. Um, because if I could take this, that's a whole new fleet. That's a whole new realm of possibilities. All right. I'm going to take my research down to very sad levels in order to maintain my fleet operations. And then I need to up my building for transport capacity because we're broke. And then, yes. We're starting to get into big boy destroyers. Big boy destroyers are where it's at. But yeah, we are we are barely keeping pace. <sighs> Man, this game gets stressful. But hey, we're getting there. We are getting there and we are getting there. And we're going to try to conquer China, which is hilarious. Uh, 2,700 ton destroyers which is something that is that is really something when it comes down to destroyers we're getting there i mean this this started off as a bit of a lark but holy crap 52% chance to take china not bad not bad at all we're going to slowly build our economy up well, back up. We're gonna try. <laughs> if I could take part of China, I mean, shit. Uh, stir fry goulash. Ugh, that's terrible. At any rate, I think I'm gonna end it here for this episode. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to listen to a weirdo like me. This channel is brought to you by you and no one else. I don't do ads. I don't try to sell you anything. I just appreciate being able to do what I do and share it with you guys. So thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll see you next time. And until then, take care of yourself. And please, if possible, be nice to each other. Later. Born, made a way to fly Ooh, the red, white, and green And when the band plays Kaiser hymn Ooh, they draft you for the war machine It ain't me, it ain't me I ain't Prince Ferdinand, son, son It ain't me, it ain't me Aristocratic one, no. Some folks are born with six fingers on their hand. Lord, don't they make their cousins mad. But when their army parades across the land, Lord, it sounds like the yards of Babel, yeah. It ain't me, it ain't me. I ain't no Habsburg son, no. It ain't me. It ain't me, I ain't no Kaiser in some, no. Oh, sorry, I don't speak German, I don't understand. Oh, that's Hungarian? No. Some folks inherit many evil powers here. Ooh, they sent you down the war, Lord. When you ask them, hey, what was that you said? Ooh, the only answer, real man, real man, man. It ain't me, 
It ain't me. I ain't no Hungarian song lord. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't Prince Ferdinand song lord. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no Kaiser song. No, no. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no Habsburg in one. 